Something that went unnoticed by a lot of people is that Tesla's battery is now different. Its new 4680 battery cells are now being made with the revolutionary dry coating. Hello my friends, welcome to the channel. I'm Sam Evans, you're watching The Electric Viking. Great to see you. A few years ago, Tesla purchased the battery company called Maxwell Technologies. And a lot of people thought it was for supercapacitors, but Tesla didn't care about the supercapacitors at all. All it wanted from Maxwell was its revolutionary new dry coating technology. It gives Tesla a few advantages, and one was meant to be scalar production. Without having to put the slurry on the batteries, um, basically having to bake the slurry onto the batteries, and it was all a bit of a hassle. Essentially, Tesla was able to do this using a dry paste, but it's taken years for Tesla actually to work out how to get this to work at scale. Still not quite there, but, Cybertrucks now have this new coating, the holy grail of fast and cheap 4680 battery production. It is meant to be the dry coating process that Tesla are, or they have started utilizing. Now the idea behind this guys is that even though yes, the 4680 battery cell is not particularly hugely energy dense, it's not remarkable in any particular way, other than being quite big in comparison to previous cylindrical batteries. but the point was to be able to make batteries like Coke bottles. So you see the production lines in a drink machine factory where they make Coke bottles or Sprite bottles. It's really fast. It happens really, really quickly. That, that's what Tesla wants to do. When Tesla gave an exclusive engineering walkthrough to Sandy Munro, and obviously Sandy Munro also interviewed Elon Musk, one of Tesla's executives actually revealed that the 4680 battery is now made with Tesla's revolutionary new dry coating production method. This is pretty big news. I mean, this is the kind of thing we've been waiting for years to hear about. Tesla though has so far only managed to achieve half of the production cost savings it promised when it announced the 4680 batteries. But it is definitely headed in the right direction just not as quickly as what it had initially hoped. So how has Tesla been able to save money on 4680 battery cell production? Well, most of the savings Tesla say have come from design and manufacturing space savings. So these are simply because the 4680 cells are big and can be used as part of the vehicle's support frame. While the battery packs with them require much less welding points. So essentially Tesla now has structural battery packs. The hard part though, when it comes to the cost savings was always the dry coating of the electrodes in Tesla's batteries. Instead of the slow, toxic and expensive wet process for coating the anode and the cathode with the desired mix, the dry coated electrodes don't require baking or hazardous substances used in their production. So their production takes much less space and time. And because Tesla don't have to essentially dry out the, the wet pasted slurry, so they don't have to use ovens to dry them. It means that they skip a section of production time. And obviously the faster you can produce something, the cheaper you can produce it. It's hugely important to manufacturing. According to numerous insiders, Tesla can only make enough though of the 1,360 cells that go into the Cybertrucks and 23 kilowatt hour 4680 cell battery pack to install in about 2,000 pickups a month. So, Tesla is battery constrained, and that's why it stopped using 4680 cells in the cheapest version of the Tesla Model Y. So you can't buy the Tesla Model Y anymore using 4680 cells. The base model now has LFP cells from CATL, and the other models have 2170 cells from the Panasonic Tesla collaboration. And the reason, of course, is that Tesla just needed those cells for the Cybertruck. So 2,000 pickups a month is just not enough. That's only, what, 24,000 pickups a year. Tesla clearly is focusing, though, on building more cells. For Elon Musk to get to the company's goal, which is 250,000 to 350,000 pickup trucks a year, well, he said by 2025, it's going to require a massive scaling up of the dry coating method. In fact, they need to scale up 10 times from current production levels, at least minimum, maybe 10 to 20. Tesla is cracking the mass 4680 cell production code though, and it is saying it now has worked out 
how to essentially use this process efficiently. When mixing smaller batches of lithium, nickel, and other materials that go into the batteries, the Teflon binder seems to be holding up, say Tesla. When vats of the stuff have to be mixed and applied to the foil though, the process generates excessive heat that melts the binder, so a lot of it has to be discarded. So Tesla is saying that they're wasting a lot of the binder essentially. In the beginning of a new battery production line cycle, this may lead to more than 30% scrap rate of batteries. That's coming from Tesla. Tesla keeps inventing better ways to apply dry coating to the 4680 electrodes, and they say have managed to reduce the scrap rate to less than 20%. But 20% is still a lot more batteries. Uh, you don't want to be throwing away any, let alone less than 20%. That may be 15%. We don't know the exact numbers. This is still way more than the 5% minimum rate of its established battery production lines. So currently, Tesla's established battery production lines, the wastage rate is only 5%. Apparently, Tesla say they have found out that defects could develop in output deemed good during initial testing. No one really knows exactly what that means though. However, this is why they are now gathering data to establish a whole new quality control and testing system based on what they've learned so far, making the new Cybertruck's 4680 batteries. According to one of Tesla's insiders, once you crack the code and establish stability, growth is exponential. And they remain optimistic that speed would pick up. If the Cybertruck ramp helps Tesla crack the code for mass dry coated electro production, it would be a revolutionary development. Now, I mean, realistically, a lot of people don't think that 4680 cylindrical battery cells make sense. They think that LFP cells are better or that prismatic cells are better, etc. But in the last six months, BMW, General Motors, and other automotive and even battery companies have moved into developing similarly sized large cylindrical cells. So years of testing and they still believe, yes, there is definitely a market for large cylindrical cells and that they can work and do make sense. And I think one of the reasons comes back to what I mentioned before. The factory that can produce the Coke bottle very, very quickly and efficiently is what Tesla is aiming for. They're not quite there yet, but I think by 2025, they could be. Hopefully they are, because then Tesla can build a lot more cyber trucks and a lot of other cars as well. Let me know your thoughts in the comments and thank you for watching.